every stalled or dropped investigation prolongs the misery felt by the families of these two lost boys. Because there is no closure, there can be no peace. Working independently, Linda and Jean occasionally turn up new evidence about the train deaths. Louis Unglesby, former attorney for Barry Seal, makes a startling revelation about his former client. When Barry died, he was being pursued by the IRS for unpaid taxes estimated at over $80 million. I was going to court and arguing all the time for different issues involving Barry because I felt like they really were guilty of a lot of misconduct in the manner in which they were investigating him, not knowing about his involvement in the government. In the course of that, it was a lot of work for me, it was a lot of work for the prosecutors here, and one of them said to me, why don't you just tell Barry to call in the Calvary and we won't have to worry about this anymore. I didn't know what he was talking about, so I asked Barry. And as a result, and, you know, in asking him, he said, okay, I, I won't tell you much, but I'll, let me show you, just call this phone number. So he gives me the phone number, I call the phone number, that's when we talk to Vice President Bush's office. So then they put this guy, admiral on the phone, or they put somebody who said he was an admiral on the phone. And uh, then I told him who I really was, and he was nonplussed by that and hung up. And then I said, you know, now Barry, really, I'm confused. So Barry called back, and they, uh, you know, they just exchanged a little greeting, and Barry apologized to him for having me call. Well, the only thing I can conclude is because they were talking to each other very seriously over probably what was a secured phone number, a secured phone. And uh, Barry Seals was in direct contact with Bush. That's why I say he had Bush pretty well conned. In its desperation to finance a clandestine underground war, the Reagan administration was already dealing with terrorists in Iran. Why not drug lords in Colombia? Barry Seal was clearly connected to men occupying the highest offices in the land. With prosecutor Dan Harmon, allegedly Seal's local operative, indicted, the guilty finger was taking a turn toward government. It's time for the American people to wake up and realize that unless they make government and do right, they're, they're going to lose their freedoms and it, on the premise that government can solve the crime problem if they give up their freedom. And the American people's got to realize that they're going to wind up with both. They're going to wind up with the loss of their freedoms and they're still going to have the crime problem. The only difference is going to be that a very big criminal is going to join the ranks of the criminal, and that's called government. The murderers of Kevin and Don may never be brought to justice. If their deaths are related to government impropriety, then there the stain of shame shall remain. The drugs flowing out of Mena, Arkansas have destroyed many lives. But the extent of misery, waste, and destruction suffered as a result of the cocaine, crack, and other drugs that freely transverse our borders will not be stopped through any just say no rhetoric unless the government says no first. They could shut the borders of this country down tomorrow morning so tight that not one gram of cocaine could get inside this country. The lives of those involved with the train deaths have changed. While Russell Welch was working on his Mena Airport investigation, he was slowly poisoned with anthrax through a series of tainted letters sent to his office. He nearly died and his kidneys and immune system were almost totally destroyed. He is retired from the force. Jean Duffy was publicly defamed and her career ruined by Dan Harmon and the local press, despite the credible evidence she was gathering with her task force. She now works as a high school teacher. As for Kevin and Don and their families, tragically, there is no amount of money or justice that can ever compensate for the loss of a child. The only thing I'm interested in is my son's murder on August 23rd of 1987, and I just want his killers brought to justice. A mother's grief has led us down the path of discovery. Though we may never know who was directly responsible for the deaths of the Ives and Henry boys, 
We're confronted once again with a larger and perhaps more pressing question. How do we respond when our government, be it local, state, or federal, turns a blind eye toward and even becomes a party to corruption? Though we've searched tirelessly, we've found no answer to this question in the Phenomenon Archives. <laughs>